Welcome to the Top Mormon Historians and Their Essential Books video. A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. Marcus Garvey. Okay, first slide is Grant Palmer. He wrote the book An Insider's View of Mormon Origins in 2002. A little bit about Grant is he received an MA in American History from BYU. He had a 34-year career in the Church Educational System, CES, in the Mormon Church. This book received six negative reviews in a Farms publication, which is always a good sign that you're on to something. And in 2004, he was disfellowshipped because of this book. Okay, the next historian is D. Michael Quinn. He wrote the book Early Mormonism and the Magic World View in 1998, which discussed Joseph Smith's treasure digging. Then the three-volume set, The Mormon Hierarchy, in 1994, 1997, and the last one was just in 2017. He received a Ph.D. in history from Yale. He was a professor at BYU for 12 years. Then he was excommunicated from the church in 1993 as one of the September 6th. He is openly gay, but still believes that Joseph Smith was a prophet. Okay, the next one is H. Michael Marquardt. I think that's how you say that. He wrote the book, The Rise of Mormonism, from 1816 to 1844 in 2005, and also Inventing Mormonism, Tradition, and the Historical Record in 1998, and many other books. He is an independent historian who has been publishing on Mormonism for more than 30 years. His essays have appeared in the Journal of Pastoral Practice, Restoration, Sunstone, Journal of Latter-day Saint History, John Whitmer Historical Association Journal, Dialogue, a Journal of Mormon Thought, Journal of Mormon History, and Mormon Historical Studies. Okay, now we have David Whitmer, who wrote the book An Address to All Believers in Christ in 1887. He was one of the eight witnesses of the Book of Mormon Golden Plates. He was the official church historian for four years in the very early days of the church, and he was excommunicated around 1838. Okay, now we have Juanita Brooks, and she wrote the much acclaimed book, The Mountain Meadows Massacre in 1950. She got the journals of Dudley Levitt, John D. Lee, and Hosea Stout published. She obtained a Master of Arts degree from Columbia University. And she was an instructor of English and Dean of Women for eight years at Dixie Junior College in St. George, Utah. Okay, Brent Lee Metcalf is the next historian. Uh, two books here, New Approaches to the Book of Mormon in 1993 and American Apocrypha, Essays on the Book of Mormon in 2002. He is an independent historian and works in the computer industry. He has moderated panels for the B.H. Roberts Society and Sunstone Symposia. Farms reacted to the New Approaches book with an unprecedented 566-page rebuttal. Okay, we now have Gerald and Sandra Tanner. In 1979, they published the book The Changing World of Mormonism. And the bigger book, which has more information, is Mormonism, Shadow or Reality, first published in 1963 and is now on the fifth edition, which was published in 2008 and more than 40 other books. The Tanners founded the Utah Lighthouse Ministry, whose stated mission is to document problems with the claims of Mormonism and compare LDS doctrines with Christianity. The Tanners printed original versions of early Mormon writings and scripture in which they annotated and highlighted doctrinal changes, such as the rejection of Brigham Young's Adam God theory. The Tanners have also published photomechanical reproductions of texts such as complete sets, of early LDS periodicals, periodicals including Messenger and Advocate, Times and Seasons, and the Millennial Star, and many more original documents. Okay, we now have Eber D. Howe, the author of Mormonism Unveiled, or a faithful account of that singular imposition and illusion from its rise to the present time, published in 1834. He was the founder and editor of the Painesville Telegraph, a newspaper published in Painesville, Ohio, starting in 1822. Mormonism Unveiled was based largely on affidavits collected by Latter-day Saint dissenter Dr. Philastus Hurlbut and on the letters of dissenter Ezra Booth, which in 1831 had been published in the Ohio Star. 
He also worked at the Buffalo Gazette in Buffalo, New York, the Erie Gazette in Erie, Pennsylvania, and the Cleveland Herald in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, Will Bagley. He wrote Blood of the Prophets, Brigham Young, and the Massacre at Mountain Meadows in 2002, and The Mormon Rebellion, America's First Civil War, 1857 through 1858 in 2011. He is a historian specializing in the history of the Western United States and the American Old West. Bagley has written about the fur trade, overland immigration, American Indians, military history, frontier violence, railroads, mining, and Utah and the Mormons. He received a BA in history from the University of California at Santa Cruz. He has written more than 20 books and in 2008 historian David Roberts dubbed him the sharpest of all thorns in the side of the Mormon historical establishment. In September 2014, the Utah State Historical Society granted Bagley its most prestigious honor as a fellow. Western Writers of America gave Bagley its 2019 Owen Wister Award for lifetime contributions to Western literature in 2019. Okay, John G. Turner. He wrote the definitive biography on Brigham Young. It's called uh, Brigham Young, Pioneer Prophet, came out in 2012. John earned a PhD in American history from the University of Notre Dame and a Master's of Divinity from Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary. He is a professor of American religion at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. Okay, Christopher C. Smith. You can find him at the Worlds Without End blog on the internet. I have four articles here that he's done. That Which is Lost, Assessing the State of Preservation of the Joseph Smith Papyra uh, for the John Whitmer Historical Association Journal in April 2011. And the original length of the scroll of Hoare for Dialogue, a Journal of Mormon Thought in 2010. And Joseph Smith and Hermeneutical Crisis, Dialogue, a Journal of Mormon Thought in 2010. And the dependence of Abraham 1, verses 1 through 3, on the Egyptian alphabet and grammar for the John Whitmer Historical Association Journal in 2009. In 2016, he received a Ph.D. in religion from Claremont Graduate University in Claremont, California. And I believe he is now a professor at the University of Utah. Okay, we now have the famous Fawn M. Brody. And she wrote the definitive biography of Joseph Smith called No Man Knows My History, The Life of Joseph Smith in 1945. In 1936, she earned a Master of Arts degree in English from the University of Chicago. She became one of the first tenured female professors of history at UCLA. Newsweek magazine called Brody's book a definitive biography in the finest sense of the word. She is also the author of the highly acclaimed biography, Thomas Jefferson, An Intimate History. Okay, we now have Jeremy Runnels, and he is not so much of a historian as he is a distiller of other historians' thoughts. He's a very good condenser, a very good summarizer, and he put all that into the CES letter, My Search for Answers to My Mormon Doubts, in 2013. You can find it at cesletter.org. It's a very good summary. It's uh, become very popular and influencing a lot of people's faith crises. And he resigned from the church in 2016. B.H. Roberts, Studies of the Book of Mormon, published in 1985. This was published posthumously, one of the first books to deal with some of the Book of Mormon historicity problems. It's a very good book, and he's very admired for his comprehensive history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, six volumes, 1930. Not to be confused with the other history of the church in multiple volumes uh, edited by Joseph Smith. This was B.H. Roberts' own work. He was a member of the 70 for 45 years. He served as assistant church historian for 31 years. He wrote two biographies, a novel, eight historical narratives and compilations, and another dozen books about Mormon theology. Okay, Dan Vogel. He is my favorite historian. Uh, he wrote the seminal biography on Joseph Smith called Joseph Smith, The Making of a Prophet in 2004. He is the editor and compiler of early Mormon documents, five volumes in 1996. He is an independent researcher and author. 
He was awarded the Best Book Award in September 2004 by the John Whitmer Historical Association and the Turner Bergera Best Biography Award by the Mormon History Association in May of 2005. This for his biography on Joseph Smith. His books have been critiqued in depth by many farms apologists, which is always a good sign. Okay, Todd M. Compton wrote one of the seminal works on polygamy. It's entitled In Sacred Loneliness, The Plural Wives of Joseph Smith, which came out in 1997. He is an expert on plural wives of the LDS Church. In 1982, he completed a master's degree in classics and comparative literature from BYU. He later received a PhD from UCLA in classics, concentrating on Greek and Indo-European mythology, which he taught for a year at USC. He also taught at UCLA and Cal State Northridge. He has been an independent researcher since 1993, drawing a regular income by working as an ADS specialist for a law firm. Richard S. Van Wagner. He wrote the book Mormon Polygamy, A History in 1986. The Natural Born Seer, Joseph Smith, American Prophet from 1805 to 1830, which came out in 2016. And the biography of Sidney Rigdon, A Portrait of Religious Excess in 1994. He graduated from BYU with a Master's of Science degree. His biography of Sidney Rigdon won awards from the Mormon History Association and the John Whitmer Historical Association. He has published historical articles in Utah Historical Quarterly, Dialogue, a Journal of Mormon Thought, and Sunstone. He lost his hearing due to autosclerosis and received a cochlear implant in 2001, which partially restored his hearing. He was a trained clinical audiologist and died at the age of 64. Gregory A. Prince. He wrote Leonard Arrington and the Writing of Mormon History in 2016 and David O. McKay and the Rise of Modern Mormonism in 2005. He received a Ph.D. in Pathology from UCLA. After spending more than a decade at NIH, National Institute of Health, and John Hopkins University, he co-founded Virion Systems, a biotech company focused on the prevention and treatment of pediatric infectious diseases. Prince currently serves as president and CEO of VSI. He also serves on the boards of several nonprofit institutions, including Dixie State University, University of Utah, Utah Valley University, and Wesley Theological Seminary. In 2012, he was awarded an honorary doctorate of humanities by Dixie State College. Prince is the author of over 150 scientific publications in the field of infectious diseases. He also has published many articles on religious history and theology, as well as five books in the same field. Okay, Linda King Newell and Valine Tippetts Avery wrote the important book Mormon Enigma, Emma Hale Smith in 1984. Linda graduated from Utah State University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Art and Speech Education. Linda was also editor of the scholarly Mormon periodical Dialogue, a Journal of Mormon Thought. She served as president of the John Whitmer Historical Association for one year and the Mormon History Association for two years. Valine received a master's degree and a Ph.D. in history from Northern Arizona University. She served as president of the Mormon History Association for two years. Valine also served as professor of history at Northern Arizona University. Linda and Valine spent nine years researching the life of Emma Hale Smith in archives from coast to coast. Awards given for the biography include the David Woolley, and Beatrice Cannon Evans Award for Excellence in Western and Mormon Biography, the Mormon History Association Award for the best book published on Mormon history in 1984, and an award presented by the John Whitmer Historical Association for the best book in LDS history. William Law. He published a single edition of the Nauvoo Expositor, a Mormon paper, the destruction of which set in motion a chain of events that eventually led to Smith's assassination. Law held a position in the early church's first presidency under Joseph Smith and was later excommunicated for apostasy. I would encourage everybody to read this Nauvoo Expositor, which came out in June 7, 1844. Robert K. Rittner. He wrote the book The Joseph Smith Egyptian Papyra, a complete edition in 2013. Robert earned a Ph.D. in Egyptology from the University of Chicago. 
He is the Assistant Professor of Egyptology in the Department of Near Eastern Languages and Civilizations at Yale University. He is known for confirming the conclusions of other Egyptologists who have investigated the Joseph Smith papyri. Ridner has concluded that the Book of Abraham is a perhaps well-meaning but er erroneous invention by Joseph Smith. Okay, David J. Berger. The Mysteries of Godliness, A History of Mormon Temple Worship in 2002. Definitely one of the best, if not the best, books on this topic. He has a bachelor's degree from BYU. He has written many articles appearing in Dialogue, A Journal of Mormon Thought, Journal of Mormon History, Sunstone, and the John Whitmer Historical Association Journal. He has also worked as a management consultant. John Krakauer. He wrote the book, Under the Banner of Heaven, A Story of Violent Faith, in 2003. He received a bachelor's degree in environmental studies from Hampshire College in Massachusetts. He is the author of seven popular books. His writing has also appeared in Outside Magazine, Architectural Digest, National Geographic Magazine, Rolling Stone, and the Smithsonian. Okay, Kathleen Kimball Melanakos. Her book is Secret Combinations, Evidence of Early Mormon Counterfeiting, 1800 to 1847, which came out in 2016. She is a graduate of BYU and holds a master's degree in philosophy from Stanford University. Beginning in 2007, Kathleen began visiting courthouses, libraries, state archives, universities, and historical societies in the areas of early Mormon settlement. She collected copies of original historical documents that reveal a new dimension in Mormon and pre-Mormon history. Okay, the married couple of TBH and Fanny Stenhouse. TBH wrote the book Tell It All, The Story of a Life's Experience in Mormonism and Autobiography in 1874. And Fanny wrote Exposé of Polygamy in Utah, A Lady's Life Among the Mormons, a record of personal experience as one of the wives of a Mormon elder during a period of more than 20 years, which came out in 1872. The Stenhouses were early Mormon pioneers and missionaries. T.B.H. Stenhouse was the editor of the Salt Lake Telegraph, a newspaper that was consistently pro-Mormon. The Stenhouses were particularly opposed to the LDS Church's practice of plural marriage. Charles M. Larson. He wrote the book By His Own Hand Upon Papyrus, a new look at the Joseph Smith papyri in 1992. Charles was a high school teacher in the Provo, Utah School District, and he was fired for writing this popular book. Before this, he was a career peace officer for 10 years, working with the Utah Department of Corrections at the state prison in Draper, Utah. Okay, Michael D. Coe. He wrote the article, Mormons and Archaeology, an Outside View. This was published in Dialogue, a Journal of Mormon Thought in 1973. He was also on Mormon Stories podcast for three episodes in 2011. Michael graduated from Harvard College and received his PhD in anthropology from the Harvard Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. He was a professor of anthropology at Yale University for many years. He is primarily known for his research in the field of pre-Columbian Mesoamerican studies, and in particular for his work on the Maya civilization where he is regarded as one of the foremost Mayanist scholars of the later 20th century. Coe has also made extensive investigations across a variety of other archaeological sites in North and South America. He has written many seminal books and papers about Mesoamerica and the Mayan. John C. Bennett. His book was The History of the Saints, or an Exposé of Joe Smith and Mormonism, which came out in 1842. The book accused Joseph Smith of treason, conspiracy to commit murder, prostitution, and adultery. John was an American physician and assistant president of the church for about one year. He was also mayor of Nauvoo, Illinois, and major general of the Nauvoo Legion. Bennett was essential to the passing of the Nauvoo City Charter. Bennett was also excommunicated from the church for adultery in 1842. Also in 1842, he claimed that he had been the target of an, of an attempted assassination by Nauvoo Danites. Also in 1842 he wrote a series of letters to the Sangamo Journal accusing Smith of conspiring to assassinate former Missouri Governor Boggs. Dean C. Jesse, editor of the Joseph Smith Papers, 22 volumes so far, 
started in 2008 and is still ongoing, and uh, most of which I believe can be found online. He is a leading expert on the writings of Joseph Smith Jr. He received a Master of Arts in LDS Church History from the College of Religion at BYU. He then taught LDS Seminary for four years at West High School in Salt Lake City. He is a respected archivist, editor, and historian, as well as an authority on early Mormon handwriting. He is the recipient of many, many awards for his writing. Okay, Ogden Kraut. His seminal work is The Ensign to the Nations, The Complete Works of Ogden Kraut, which is in six volumes. I think there's going to be an index that hasn't come out yet. He is also the author of 70 free books, which are available online at ogdenkraut.com. Some pretty inter interesting stuff in there. He was an independent Mormon fundamentalist. He kept a distance from other fundamentalist groups because he believed they had no authority to build their own churches. In 1972, Kraut was excommunicated from the LDS Church for advocating polygamy. Okay, Jim Whitefield. He wrote The Mormon Delusion, which is in five volumes, which came out, uh, I think it started coming out in 2012. Uh, it is the result of many years of research. He is an independent researcher and author on Mormonism. He taught seminary for over six years, and he resigned from the church in 2003. Okay, Anne Eliza Young, wife number 19 was her book. The Story of a Life in Bondage, Being a Complete Exposé of Mormonism, and Revealing the Sorrows, Sacrifices, and Sufferings of Women in Polygamy, which came out in 1875. She was one of Brigham Young's 55 wives. She traveled the United States giving speeches on polygamy and women's rights. She filed for divorce from Brigham Young, an act that attracted a lot of attention at the time. She claimed neglect cruel treatment and desertion. Brigham granted the divorce. She also claimed that Brigham had property worth eight million dollars and an income exceeding forty thousand dollars a month. Anne was excommunicated from the church in 1874. She testified before the U.S. Congress in 1875. Her remarks may have contributed to the passage of the Poland Act which reorganized the judicial system of the Utah Territory and made it easier for the federal government to prosecute polygamous. Klaus J. Hansen. His important book was Quest for Empire, The Political Kingdom of God and the Council of Fifty in Mormon History, which came out in 1967. He obtained bachelor's and master's degree in arts from BYU. He received a PhD from Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. He taught history at Eastern Michigan University for one year, Ohio State University for two years, Utah State University for three years, and Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, Canada for eight years. He participated in several organizations including the American Historical Association, the Western History, Western History Association, and the Utah State Historical Society. He was awarded fellowships from Yale University and the Canada Council and won an award of merit from the American Association for State and Local History and the Mormon History Association's Book Award for Quest for Empire. Harold Schindler. He wrote the book Oren Porter Rockwell, Man of God, Son of Thunder, which came out in 1966. He had a 50-year journalism career with the Salt Lake Tribune. He rose through the ranks as a police reporter, humor writer, and spent 27 years as a television columnist. He also regularly covered Utah history and current events, producing articles in which he chronicled Utah's history leading to statehood. His Rockwell biography, published by the University of Utah Press, has been reprinted in multiple editions and has become its publisher's best-selling book of all time. The biography won an award of merit from the American Association for State and Local History. Okay, Maria Ward which is actually a pseudonym. The author of this book is unknown. The book is entitled Female Life Among the Mormons and it came out in 1855. It is an expose of polygamy amongst other topics. Okay, Richard and Joan K. Ostling, Mormon America, The Power and the Promise, which came out in 1999. Richard is a journalist who reports on religious topics. 
He is a senior correspondent for Time Magazine and the president of the Religion Newswriters Association. He was once a senior editor of the Michigan Daily. He graduated from the University of Michigan and holds master's degrees in journalism from Northwestern University and a master's degree in religion from George Washington University. His distinctions include a Pulitzer Prize nomination, the American Academy of Religion, Supple, and Templeton Prizes, and the Lifetime Achievement Award of the Religion Newswriters Association. Now Joan, his wife, earned master's degrees in English and political science and was a writer and editor for the U.S. Information Agency in Washington, D.C. She was an assistant professor of English and journalism at Nyack College in New York, New York City, as well as having taught at several other evangelical colleges. Maxine Hanks, and her book is Women and Authority, Reemerging Mormon Feminism, which came out in 1992. She is a Mormon feminist theologian and was excommunicated from the church as part of the September 6. In 2012, she was rebaptized as a member of the church and serves in her ward in the Young Women's Presidency. She has been a freelance researcher, writer, and editor. Previously, she was employed by the University of Utah and BYU. She has served on the advisory boards of the Association of Utah Publishers and the Utah Historic Trails Consortium. She is a 1992 research fellow at the Utah Humanities Council and Harvard Divinity School. She has lectured in gender studies at several universities and has given pr presentations at many religious studies conferences. She is the author of several books. She has also done corporate and professional consulting and political lobbying. Okay, John D. Lee. He wrote the book Mormonism Unveiled. And this is a different book than the original one. This one is The Life and Confession of John D. Lee and the Complete Life of Brigham Young and was written in 1877. There's also the book A Mormon Chronicle, which is the diaries of John D. Lee from 1848 to 1876, and those are very interesting. That came out in 1955. John was an American pioneer and prominent early member of the church in Utah. He was convicted as a mass murderer for his complicity in the Mountain Meadows Massacre sentenced to death and was executed in 1877. He was a friend of Joseph Smith and was the adopted son of Brigham Young. He was allegedly a member of the Danites and was a member of the Council of Fifty. Okay, Simon G. Southerton. He wrote the book Losing a Lost Tribe, Native Americans, DNA, and the Mormon Church, which came out in 2004. Simon has a PhD from the University of Sydney. He was or is a principal research scientist in the applied biotechnology and genomics area of the Commonwealth Scientific Laboratories in Canberra, Australia. He is a plant geneticist and co-founder of Gondwana Genomics. His Losing a Lost Tribe book uses genetic evidence to examine the historical accuracy of the Book of Mormon and related claims about the Lamanite people. He has published in Plant Journal, Plant Molecular Biology, and Plant Physiology. He resigned from the church as a bishop in 1998. Sally Denton. She wrote the book American Massacre, The Tragedy at Mountain Meadows, September 1857, which came out in 2003. Sally is an investigative reporter, author, and historian. She is the author of eight nonfiction books. She is the director of literary nonfiction at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and adjunct professor of documentary studies and history at the University of New Mexico. She is the recipient of over a dozen awards and honors ranging from the New York Times, Stanford University, and Western Heritage Wrangler. All right, Wild Bill Hickman a.k.a. William Adams Hickman. His autobiography is Brigham's Destroying Angel Being the Life, Confession, and Startling Disclosures of the Notorious Bill Hickman, the Day-Night Chief of Utah, which came out in 1872 and, and caused quite a stir. Bill was the personal bodyguard for Joseph Smith and Brigham Young and was reportedly a member of the Danites. He was excommunicated from the church in 1868. And according to his autobiography, Hickman's excommunication immediately followed his refusal to commit an assassination at Brigham Young's request. Also in the book, he confessed to having committed numerous murders, most of them at Brigham Young's request. 
Federal law enforcement authorities at the time gave Hickman enough credence to hold off charging him with any murders so that he could be a material witness in a case that they were attempting to build against Young. During this time, Hickman was held at Fort Douglas, where he was guarded by the military, because federal authorities believed that Hickman needed witness protection from a perceived threat by the Danites. Thank you for watching the Top Mormon Historians and their Essential Books video.